Hello from Force, this is Captain Frugal reporting for duty and today I'm going to take us back in time, going to take us back a few years to step back to an, another issue from the past because you know sometimes when we look at the past we find some greatness and well you know sometimes looking for the past it's well not so great is it? <laughs> So we're going to jump all the way back to 2011. Yeah, you know, it's really, I guess it doesn't seem that long ago to me, but yet, yet it is. Anyway, I'm going to go back to Green Arrow. Now, for those of you that are familiar with my channel, you know a couple things. One is I'm not a big fan of the new 52. I'm not a big fan of ultimate retcons of characters and changing their history. I think it's a little unfair to the writers that were before them that worked hard on those and developed that and all the readers that have just to have all that continuity pretty much yanked away and says it doesn't matter what you spent your money and your time invested in. Detective it doesn't matter what your name is! Uh, so with that said, another point too is you know I'm not big into polit politics in comic books. And I mean really, and when you get to Green Arrow, you don't get much more political than that because Green Arrow is the self claimed proclaimed i should say if anything sjw superhero and he is absolutely an sjw superhero and he proudly says that and probably acts upon that now let me just state it there i as i said i'm not a big fan of politics and comic books but here's the kicker i don't mind as much if it's not completely always there and always in your face now granted it's always there and always in your face with green arrow but what i mean by that is dc launching you know having 52 different titles if only a few of them, like two or three of them are SJW kind of things, I don't mind so much. Because, you know, a little bit for everybody. Maybe we can have some right-wing ones too, two or three. But the majority of them, in my opinion, not yours, you feel free to disagree in the comments section, is that we should try to be apolitical. Try to please as many people as possible. That's just a good business model. But, once again, if you want to pander also to smaller groups, that's okay too. As long as it's not your whole company is dominated by that like Marvel <laughs> so with that said I'm looking at the new 52 and out of all things Green Arrow and it's that I got these really really cheap for like a quarter an issue so I said why not give it a shot and so jumping in right away I'm gonna say that you, you know what you're expecting with Green Arrow you know you're gonna get a loudmouth obnoxious SJW that's very uh, very big into his opinions and he doesn't hold back and that's sort of the fun of the character because if you think about it in this series and in, in Green Arrow in general he's pretty much the ultimate hypocrite superhero he sits there he's against the man he's against against capitalism the rich man but yet he was the rich boy himself granted he's trying to do good because of that but yet you think about all the things he's doing to try to do good he's giving to homeless shelters he's feeding the poor which are all wonderful things mind you you don't get me wrong okay so all these things he's doing is because he has money also how could he be running around with all that special arrows and tack and fancy bows and body armor if he didn't have the money to support it in the first place making him a very big hypocrite so much so he even is aware of it that yes there's been times in Green Arrow's storyline uh, especially the next volume of Green Arrow where he gets his money taken away or loses his money if you will and he bounce has to bounce back from that go back to his roots of what he wants to be I shouldn't say his roots because he wasn't. His roots was a rich, spoiled brat. He's going back and changed to be what he wants to be and what he wants to envision himself to be. So while he's running around, and all this is anti-capitalistic commonality that he loves to use in his terms and everything, like he hated trickle-down trickle economics and things like that, he was the rich boy himself using his money, which makes it absolutely fantastically funny because look at how much he can do and how much more he can do. Wealth does not make you evil, people. Wealth just allows you to do more of what you are. If you are a scumbag, you're going to be a bigger scumbag. If you're a great, helpful, nice, caring person, you're going to be more of a nice, helpful, caring person. It allows you to do more. Just that, plain and simple. And that is exactly what he did. So anyway, the story is uh, this 52-issue series. Uh, and I will say, this is an issue, uh, a series that never really lit it on fire. Uh, it had it had highs, and it had a lot of lows. It started out with writer J.T. Krull, Krull maybe, K-R-U-L, and the penciler was Dan Jurgens, and the inker was George Perez, colorist David Barron, and letterer Rob Lay. Cover was different people through different times, but we had get, get a lot of them by Dave Wilkins. Now, I will say the artwork special was pretty good. It's probably one of the stronger points in the New 52 Green Arrow. 
especially under Dan Jurgens, and later on it changes at another point where it goes with a different art style, but it was very fitting too. But I will say that the series didn't start off with a bang. I thought the series started off very weak under J.T. Kroll. It just, it never was anything really big to gravitate to and grab your attention, but the art was quite fantastic. So I thought the series was off to a pretty slow start, if you will. And then later on, around issue 17, we started to getting more of a dark turn. We started getting more interesting storylines, if you will. And I believe strongly because that was Jeff Lemire took over as writer. Uh, and it's just he started adding more depth to the character, more history, more connections, a better back cast uh, of characters to be with him in the story to make you care about how things are going and what's going on. So you had a combination of that as well as good action. You had Green Arrow really getting put through the paces and put through the ringer if you will. Uh, the art style was also changed pretty significantly though I did love the art style previously. Uh, Andrea Sorrentino, I probably pronounced that name wrong, uh, became the artist and between that and the colorist that uh, that, that he did he was also the car, the colorist as well and you, I th think you could tell that he did it all on pr as well as not just because you can read it that way but it fit his art style it became a much more dark gritty realistic tone if you will the credit of course their comic book stories so how realistic are they but it just really was a nice tone and change you get a lot more depth stories a lot more deep a little bit more mystical if you will we started seeing like more ninjas and things like that he was going against it's just you know, League of Assassins kind of stuff. And it just really fit Green Arrow well. I think it really picked up the story, made it more interesting. Unfortunately, <laughs> that can't continue forever. And I would say that ran for a while under that. That was pretty good. But then around issue 35 through the issue 52, the last issue of the series, it started going more on cruise control. And you could tell usually when a story has issues, when they start trying to bring in all kinds of supporting characters, you know, from other titles and things, just to pump it up. Like, oh, Batman's in this issue. Oh, Superman's in this issue. Now, granted, it was part of the storyline, why is being all those to summarize it all at the end of the story arc. But still, usually when you see things like that, as well as costume changes, it's usually a sign of this comic book is struggling in sales. Anyway, around issue uh, 35, we started seeing changes again in the cast that was involved in the book. Now, I will say art-wise, once again, it still maintained a lot of strength in that department. It was pretty good, but it was still a bit more of a mixed bag. Where the story, though, is where I think it started really seeing it drop down overall in quality. We had Andrew Kreisenberg and Ben Sokolowski doing the story, and I probably butchered their names, so I do apologize. <laughs> the script was also by Ben Sokolowski. So, and the penciler was, there were, once again, this is, you're going to see some changes at the end with a little bit more of a rotating cast, but at this point it was Daniel Semperere, S-A-M-P-E-R-E, -E, Semperere, I don't know. <laughs> and anyway, it wasn't terrible art, don't get me wrong, it just didn't have the dark, gritty style, or it didn't also match up to the just technically fantastic Dan Jurgen style of artwork. And, you know, usually you can see that when cast change like that, it, it usually means that the title's winding down and they're getting it ready to finish the end of it. So overall, it was a 52-issue ride with a slow beginning, a strong middle, and a pretty eh, mediocre ending. Nothing fantastic. I'm not telling you to run out and buy this series, but I'm saying if you find it like me, cheap for maybe a quarter an issue, it just might be worth checking out. I wouldn't recommend passing it up for that. There's some definitely good to be had in there. On top of that, let's talk about some positives and negatives there too. As I said, uh, the strong supporting cast, but there was one major part of that supporting cast that was really missing, and that's Black Canary. How can you have Green Arrow with Black Canary? You're just always missing something. It was one of the biggest misses in the New 52, in my opinion. So if you're a Black Canary lover, and that's one of the reasons you pick up that uh, Green Arrow series, this isn't going to be the one for you. So, sad, but true. <laughs> and yes, you will be beat over the head with SJW antics, though you'll get beat even worse on them if you go into Green Arrow Rebirth, which I will talk about in another video as well. So, mixed bag, but not a completely terrible, terrible run. Uh, 
Once again, it's new 52, so what can you expect? I'm not expecting it to light up anything. It was delivered better than I expected, I'll say that, but it was definitely like, oh my gosh, please get this. It never made it to, to that height. On top of that, a lot of the stuff in this series, as well as some in Rebirth, is what uh, you see different versions of those stories with the key concepts taken from the Arrow TV, for the Arrow TV show. So the Arrow TV show borrowed a lot of these concepts and things from the new 52 Green Arrow as well as the Rebirth Green Arrow. So if you like what you see on there, you might like this as well. All right, well, thanks for watching this video. Until next time, keep it frugal. Thanks for sticking with me through this. If you don't mind and you enjoy videos like this, please be sure to hit that like and subscribe. And even bigger, hit that notifications bell because evidently that means a lot. Also, if you find yourself in the position that you can help the channel and you want to, you say, hey, I like this stuff. If you don't mind, go down to the info bar down below. We have a link for our Patreon, which you can join our Patreon for as little as $1 a month, which gets you special posts that are only for the patrons. So sometimes I do Frugal Force videos that are patron only or special versions of videos. I also do random Frugal Force giveaways where I just take a random person out of there with a random number generator that selects who it is and I send them stuff, whether it be games or comic books or both, whoever knows. And sometimes they even just ask you guys questions or shoot up a message. And I greatly appreciate you checking those out. Also, if you find that maybe that's not for you, you don't like Patreon, we have it in the info bar as well a Streamlabs link there where you can click on that and just give a one-time donation. And that helps the channel. All those proceeds are going right back into the channel to help Little Frugal and I and his sister, the American Dream, my wonderful little girl, <laughs> and our family continue to have fun doing this and sharing this with you. All right, thank you very much. Thank you, subscribers. Thank you for all the ones who have stuck it out with me this long and all the new ones that have joined on, too. Thank you. We greatly appreciate it. And don't be afraid to leave a message in the comments section, too. We love to read them. All right, thanks, and until next time, keep it frugal.